Hey, Max here. In this video, we'll go over object picking. So even if you've never heard the exact phrase object picking before, as long as you've interacted with the event sheet, you're already really familiar with it. Object picking is just a scenario where conditions in the event sheet filter the objects that are then acted on in actions. Our example for this video is going to center around making a simple checkpoint system, like you see here. The checkpoint object itself is just a sprite object with both a checked and unchecked animation. Now, in the most basic case, if we just set the animation of the checkpoint to be checked without any conditions, then, well, it's going to apply to all of the checkpoints. And all of our checkpoints will be activated when the game starts. So we need to incorporate a condition. Really what we want is when the player collides with the checkpoint and the checkpoint is not already activated, then we want to activate it. Notice how the conditions here are acting as a kind of filter, only letting the checkpoints which are colliding with the player and aren't active through. Then when we apply an action on checkpoint, it only applies to the checkpoint that we've filtered, i.e. the checkpoint that we've collided with. Now sure enough, we have activatable checkpoints and activating one will not activate a later one. However, as we can see here, we have another problem. Checkpoints that we've already activated will remain activated even when we activate the next one. So what should we do if we want only one checkpoint activated at a time? Well, looking at our event sheet, it's not super clear. On one hand, we need to test for collision with the checkpoint, which excludes all of the other checkpoints. But then on the other hand, we want to deactivate all those other checkpoints, which have already been excluded by our collision. So we're in a bit of a catch-22 here. Fortunately though, GDevelop has exactly the solution. So I'm going to start by removing the logic that checks our checkpoint and adding a new sub-event. And here I'm going to use the condition pick all objects. And when I apply this for the checkpoint object, it'll be as if there were no conditions at all with respect to the picking. So in other words, all of the checkpoints will be back in our picking list. So when we apply an action to the checkpoint, it'll apply to all of the checkpoints. Thus, in this particular case, all of the checkpoints will be deactivated. This includes the one that we collided with, so now we need to make sure to check that one as well. So looking over our event sheet now, we see that first, we uncheck all of the checkpoints, and then we check only the checkpoint that we collided with. And the net result of this is that that checkpoint is the only activated checkpoint. Visually, that looks like this. Next, we'll take a look at how to give this fly enemy here the ability to shoot bullets at the player. We'll start by repeating the timer fly shoot every second. And then for each enemy, we'll create a bullet at its position. Once an object is created, it will actually be immediately picked, which means we can then conduct actions on our new object. In this case, we'll start moving the bullet towards the player. Now sure enough, the bullets will be shot at the player every second. Finally, there are a few extra actions related to picking that are important to bring up. The first is pick a random object, which will just pick a random of the objects selected in the scene, and pick nearest object, which will pick the object nearest to a particular X and Y position. So that's object picking in GDevelop. As per usual, if you have any questions, or if you want to let us know what video you want to see next, definitely leave your feedback in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.